Hello, my name is Alan Owens, and I'm the GC and GCMS product manager here at Shimatsu Scientific Instruments. In this video, I will show you how to properly start up your GC2030. Make sure that all the gases are connected, the regulators are set correctly, and the cutoff valves are open. Consult the GC site prep document for necessary gas purity and supply pressure. Plug in the power cable of the GC unit and switch on the power. If accessories are attached, turn on power to those units as well. The system will go through initialization steps. Please allow initialization to go to completion before proceeding. The indicating lights on the GC unit should be yellow or not lit up at all. The indicator lights on the auto samplers should turn green. Next, power up the PC and start lab solutions or other GC control software you are using. You should hear a long beep from the GC to indicate connection has been established. If there is an issue connecting your GC to your control software, check the transmission parameters using the GC front panel. From the home screen, select Function, then Configuration, then Transmission Settings. Select USB or Ethernet, depending on your system connection type. If you are using Ethernet, check the IP address to make sure that it matches the IP address listed in the system configuration in your software. Here, we are using USB. Press Apply after entering any changes. Next, you must check to make sure that the GC column is connected and that the correct column information has been entered in the GC. You can access column information on the control panel by selecting Column Info on the Column Oven screen. If the GC system has gone through long periods of time without gas flow, it will be necessary to purge out the system with carrier gas at room temperature before heating up. You can do this using your control software or the GC control panel. From the monitor screen, press Temp Monitor, then set the temperature to 25 to 30 degrees Celsius for all temperature zones. Injector, Column, Detector, etc. If you use the software for this step, set the temperatures in the different zones and then save as a new method. Be sure to download the method to apply it to the GC. If you normally use splitless injection method, open the method editor and change that setting to split mode for purging the GC. Make sure to save and download the method. If you normally use high pressure injection method or cryogenic cooling, change to not use for purging. If you have capped off any vents in the back of the GC, such as ECD vents for extended storage, please remove the G-plugs you use to cap the vents before proceeding. Remember to perform an automatic carrier gas leak check before startup. First check that the column is connected and the correct column dimensions have been entered. The leak check will not be accurate if the column dimensions are not correct. Then, from the home screen, select Function, then Diagnosis, then Carrier Gas Leak Check. Confirm your column dimensions once more, then press Start. You can now start controlling the temperature and flow of your GC unit. From the Lab Solutions software, you can either press System On from the Acquisition menu at the left, or press System On from the top toolbar. Once the GC system has been purged out successfully for 20 to 30 minutes at room temperature, you can download your analysis method using the control software. You can ignite the FID once the GC reaches 100 degrees Celsius. Wait for system stabilization before running samples. Often, the first one or two runs may not look good, and that's normal. The GC will take some time to reach optimal analytical condition. For more information about GC2030 maintenance, visit www.ssi.shimadzu.com. Excellence in Science. Shimazu.